Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ, and anyone else who sees this video. I'd like you to understand more about, um, you know, when I asked for prayer the second time for Sis Karen and our sister Lena, who has the channel, Jubilina Redeemed. Okay, um, somebody said that I was just a sad old woman, maybe because I believed in uh, the tax that come and how they come. Well, here is it. Um, look, when if you don't understand the spiritual side, uh, the okay, let me back it up. Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that our war is not against flesh and blood, but is against the powers and principalities in the high places and in the heavenlies. All right, that is Satan and his fallen angels and all the demons that are, um, demons are disembodied souls of the Nephilim, which is when uh, a fallen angel has sex, can make himself into a human, have sex with a woman, they procreate, the child is born, there was a, a, many, many of them were giants, not all of them, but a lot of them, and they found their bones, there's uh, Steve Quayle, you can look him up, L.A. Marzulli is another, Marzulli with a Z-U-L-L-I, those are two experts, I'm pretty sure Marzulli is one of them, anyway, you can look them up, giants found, skulls of giants found, just type it in here, YouTube, you'll find it. And you'll see yourself how gigantic these skulls are. Well, anyway, these demons can embody us. If you, even as a Christian, do what's called opening a door by sinning openly, I mean, on purpose. You know you're about to commit a sin, but you're weak. You just got to do this, and then you talk yourself into it. Well, the demon talks you into it, and you do it. The demon has a right to come in, especially if it is a repeated sin. You've done it more than once. Okay, they... It's like our bodies are temples. We know that our bodies are temples. If you know anything about Solomon's temple, the temple that God instructed, um, how he instructed them, the lighting's dimming. I don't know what's going on. Okay, there's an outer court for women and foreigners. There's an inner court for only the men. And then there's the Holy of Holies for only the one priest to go in once a year where the Ark of the Covenant was held, which housed the Ten Commandments and the Rod of Aaron, which budded at some point. Um, not sure when, but anyway, that was placed in the Ark. Okay. And I know that it had the power of God in it because if men touched it or if that priest that went in there to do the annual praying, I'm not exactly sure what they did. I'd have to look it up. Whatever their duties were, if they weren't right with the Lord and repentant, they would die if they touched that thing. So anyway... If a demon comes in, they can't get into our Holy of Holies if we're born again. But they can get into the outer court. Don't ask me where that is. Is that an arm? Is that a leg? Is that, it's, I don't know. But then, so you become demonized, as Derek Prince puts it. 
You're not possessed. People that end up sinning and sinning and sinning or playing with the occult and they do it more and more. They advance to different techniques. They're inviting more and more demons in. They can become possessed, okay? And then the demons take over. That's what I believe happens with serial killers because that's just not normal. But even they can be delivered. Um, one of them was in prison. I want to say David Horowitz, the one that heard dogs talking to him. Of course, they thought he was just crazy, but it was demons talking, using dogs, getting it. They can get into our pets through their orifices of various kinds. All right, well, that's why I say plead the blood of Jesus over your pets and any other animals you're raising. Okay, now let me get on to why I'm on here uh, to start with. Um, I've been watching a video by Watch Woman. Let me make sure. Watch Woman. I want you to hear the first part of this, how she was attacked and found out that it was an attack and not an illness. Okay, listen. It's Saturday, December 21st, 2019. Yesterday at 1130 at night, I had a spiritual attack that manifested in physical severe physical symptoms we are at war we are in a spiritual battle like i have never seen before and i'm going to share with you what happened how i recognized it how i claimed my authority in christ and rebuked it all right and so um what i'm going to do is share with you what happened i'm also going to include the the prayer that i prayed so that you could kind of see like an example of how you can um, do spiritual warfare when you are under attack. I know many people have contacted me and told me that they're under similar types of spiritual attacks. But unfortunately, people don't realize that these spiritual attacks can uh, present themselves in physical symptoms. And so how I know it was a spiritual attack is I had the attack. And then after I prayed the prayer, within minutes, um, all of my symptoms disappeared and I uh, fell asleep peacefully. All right. And so Amen. this is scriptural um, as believers. In okay. I'm going to stop it there. Um, just to explain, um, see if when uh, Lena from Jubilee Redeem put out that um, request for urgent prayer, probably they were both in some really severe pain, but I don't know what was going on. Um, I remember one time now thinking back, it was like someone took a very narrow but long knife and heated it up and stabbed me in the back with it. It was right between your shoulder blades. And, I mean, it hurt so bad. It was like all of a sudden. And I hate to, you know, even admit this. But it hurts. You, I rate pain from a 1 to 10 based on the worst pain I ever had was labor pain. So I use that as my reference. If it hurts like a labor pain, it's a 10. This was more than a 10. I'm telling you, it was so bad. I was taking four tramadols and not getting relief. I should have known then. I told my doctor... She got me in. She she did an MRI. And they told her, the report said, a regular x-ray, it was normal. They said a regular x-ray is recommended, like the type you just take for a broken arm. A regular x-ray is better for bones to see if I had a broken, uh, when you have a broken, uh, you know, your vertebrae, 
you have all these vertebrae down your spine. If you crack one and it pinches on a nerve, it can feel like that. So that's what she was suspecting. Well, that was normal, and didn't, she never did order the other. But that lasted one month, and I, it didn't even occur to me. I, I thought maybe that it was a voodoo curse, that she'd stuck a pin in my... The lady that I was told was doing voodoo against me. She's no longer with us. Um, but anyway, that I thought I should... It's really hard when you're in that kind of pain to think straight. But I was pr praying and trying to plead the blood of Jesus, rebuking any voodoo curses. But um, it could have been a different kind of uh, spiritual attack. The point is, this video, she explains and gives lots of scripture on... Uh, she explains... A prayer you can say, scriptures to look up and learn, and it's only 11 minutes and 52 seconds. So in under 12 minutes, you can learn how to know it's an attack and how to fight it, okay? Whether it's from witchcraft or... Uh, um, Help me, Jesus, what that woman was doing. Voodoo, it's a different kind of curse or spell. There's different ones. Santeria, whatever that is. I don't know them all. But there's different kinds of dark religions, you could say, that have their own kind of spell casting. And, of course, you've got your Satanists, and they have their kind of spell casting. Okay, so that's who we're up against, okay? We don't hate people. We hate the demons and the fallen angels and Satan, of course. And they're the ones we have to fight. And, yes, this is all real. It is very, very real. And to say it isn't is to just, you might as well say, the sky is never blue, you're crazy, you're colorblind. Yeah, it's kind of hardly ever really blue, but it still is now and then. You see my point? Um, you can't be in denial about it. You need to learn about it and know when to use it. So I'm going to be quiet now. I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over my computer, the internet connection, and over each and every one of you that watch this video and uh, over your computers, your internet connections, and I pray we get to stay connected until we're out of here. All right, if God will permit it, I believe he will. And that is my prayer for us to be able to stay in fellowship. Please watch this video if you don't already know all about attacks and how to fight them. Please watch our sister's watch woman video rebuking demonic attacks we are at war use the name of jesus they hate the name of jesus they hate the blood of jesus and that's what you have to remember okay and she talks about how sometimes they don't leave unless you pray in tongues so keep asking if you don't have that. It is important. That's why in Ephesians it says to put on all the armor. And then it says and pray in the spirit at all times with all manners of prayers and petitions and for all the saints. There's no skirting around it. There's no other way to pray in the Spirit. You can disagree if you want, but there's not another way to pray in the Spirit. Either you have a gift of tongues or you don't.
And don't feel like you're less of a Christian if you don't. Just keep asking Jesus, saying, Lord, you want me to pray against demons? You want me to pray in spirit so I can pray for all the saints and for things I know not of? So I'm begging you to let me have the gift. And you just keep persevering, okay? Don't give up. All right. So I'm going to end it there, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye for now. Have a good night or good day. See you later.